Today I've gotten hold of the original Google Glass to take a retrospective look at the tech to find out if it's still usable and what the future holds for it. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. This episode is sponsored by Madrid Noir, but more on that in a bit. Today's episode is a bit of a passion project. I absolutely love this type of tech, so I wanted to talk to you about it. Now, I know there's a million reviews of Google Glass on YouTube by now, and most of them were probably uploaded about eight years ago, so you guess I could say I'm a little bit late to the party. But still, I wanted to share my opinion with you on this utterly astounding product and also take a look at some of the recent news to discuss with you what the future of Google Glass might be. Maybe I'm just early for the next party. Now, I first got hold of this pair a few years back and the moment I put these on, honestly, it absolutely blew my mind. Considering this was the first wearable display I'd tried and it wasn't just a screen, this thing overlaid information into my environment. Add to this a bone conducting speaker and a touch interface on the side, this thing was the most futuristic device I'd ever used. So onto the real hard questions about the Google Glass. Firstly, does it still work? Well, the answer is actually yes, no, and I have no idea. In a nutshell, I can charge it, pair it up to Bluetooth, and make phone calls from my device to about four different people, and I'll explain why it's only four in a minute. I can pull up the Translate app and live translate what's in front of me. I can look at the stars and have a map projected in front of me telling me what the stars are. And I can take photos and videos. I can even watch episodes of Stu's reviews. Even the voice control element of it is still phenomenally good, especially considering this is nearly a decade old. Okay, Glass, take a photo. How fast was that? That was insane. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear it taking a photo, but it's obviously playing through the bone conduction speaker just on the side here, so it's very, very silent. You might not have been able to hear that, but it took it immediately. I love this device so much. Oh. All of this stuff we can do on our phones, yes. And some of it we can even do through augmented reality by holding phones up. But the thing is, this is sitting on my face, which is what makes it phenomenally cool especially the translation element, which zooms in on what I'm looking at and live translates it on the page and beams that directly into my eyeball without having to hold up a phone for, quite frankly, a janky AR experience. Now, the reason I also said no to the question, does it still work, is that I can no longer pair it up to the companion app that was designed for consumer use. This has been taken from the App Store on both Android and iOS, so I can no longer customize what I want to use on it, and consequently, I have no way of syncing contacts to my knowledge. I also can't connect it to a Wi-Fi network as it requires you to go to google.com forward slash myglass, which is no longer in existence. So the basic functionality I have on it right now is the functionality I'm stuck with. Now, the reason I said I don't know as well is also because there's one final update available for it, but I'm too afraid to find out what it will do. As far as I'm aware, if I install the final update that Google made back in February 2020, it will remove the ability to do anything with the apps I've installed, and it will also remove the ability to work with my Google account. However, it does leave Bluetooth connectivity to phones, and this, I think, predominantly makes it a slightly more advanced version of Snapchat specs, with the ability to take photos, videos, and some Bluetooth for things like receiving calls. So you can still use it as a wicked form of vlogging. And the quality isn't too bad either. It's 720p, and it could still be functional with someone who needed to go hands-free with video recording for whatever reason. I mean, wearing out, you are going to get some odd looks from people that still have no idea what it is you're wearing. Now, unfortunately, it's nearly impossible for me to show you what it's actually like. Recording a holograph display in a tiny, tiny prism is unbelievably hard. Okay, Glass. Record a video.
Realistically, it looks far better in person with your own eyes. So either A, you're going to have to take my word for it, or B, get one for yourself and you'll see exactly what I mean. But if you do decide to try and pick one up in the dark corners of eBay, don't expect it to have quite the same functionality that mine has, and definitely don't expect the same functionality that these things had when they came out. And that's a crying shame. I mean, okay, Google couldn't have continued supporting this indefinitely. I mean, that'd just be silly. But for how advanced this is, they could have kept things going a little bit longer. For those that are a little bit more knowledgeable about this sort of thing than me, there is a big community still on Reddit with all sorts of solutions for flashing, sideloading, and routing the device for more functionality. Obviously, this isn't officially supported, but it's good to see a wider community trying to keep at least some of the functionality alive. So, what does the future hold? for Google Glass. Well, there's some exciting prospects for it and even some news from Google. But before I talk about that, I wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, Madrid Noir. Madrid Noir is the first VR film that I've ever watched. And I tell you now, it's made me a convert. It follows the story of Lola and her journey to unravel the mystery behind her puzzling uncle through immersive storytelling and even some light interactive moments which will take you by surprise. The animation is great, the voice acting is fantastic and there's tons of little hidden details around 1920s Madrid that will make you want to watch it again and again. This type of storytelling is 100% the future, and it was such a fun experience throughout its 45 minute runtime. So if you haven't checked out Madrid Noir, make sure to add it to your list, and I'll leave a link below in the description where you can take a look. See you in a bit. Now, back to Google Glass. In 2021, believe it or not, there's actually a version of Google Glass that you can buy today. Sort of. You can buy them at various suppliers online. But these aren't the consumer edition that was originally released. These pairs are predominantly for enterprise and developer use. And the specs of this model are far better than the original. It's got a Qualcomm XR1 chip, which is similar to the XR2 in the Oculus Quest 2. It's got an 8 megapixel camera, up from the 5 on this model, and it can record 1080p at 30 FPS. Again, up from the 720 on this model. With a faster processor, I expect apps and interactivity are way faster, although the interface on this one is actually surprisingly snappy for the most part, although when you go to use the apps like the Translate, it does become a little bit laggy. So it seems that Google Glass is far from dead. And if you look at the list of Glass Enterprise customers on the Glass websites, there's some big names in there. The Samsung, VW, and even the company like the ever unhelpful money-grabbing tax everything D DHL. I mean, their delivery driver is a saint and hasn't let me down yet, but the main depot do seem to add charges to about 105% of my deliveries. But anyway, does this mean that we could see Google Glass come back to the consumer market? I really, really, really hope so. I mean, we only have to look at what's available in the market now to see that smart glasses are becoming very quick reality. There's tons of stuff out there from big companies such as the HoloLens from Microsoft, the Vuzix Blade, the upcoming Snapchat AR specs, which look a bit odd, and perhaps the most interesting being the Facebook slash Ray-Ban collaboration. Now this one interests me the most because Facebook, in my opinion, are way ahead of everyone in being able to deliver AR and VR experiences at affordable prices to the general public. Just look at the Quest. The Quest 2 is a fantastic product, and more recently we've seen some very interesting updates that are telltale signs of where Facebook could be going with their glasses. For example, you can now project your Oculus Quest menu environment onto a pass-through view of your current surroundings. And although this is black and white at the moment, I would bet my left arse cheek that they will include a colour version of this in the third gen. But either way, it gives us a cool idea of what it could like, look like in a glasses format. Not only this, but the Quest can track your hands, your sofa, your desk, your keyboard, all in VR, AR. 
again another example of what could make its way to the glasses which are supposedly going to drop this year the one big difference between google glass and all of the current ar wearables from these companies is that google glass is the only one in my opinion that actually looks good all of the others are massive chunky unsightly and look something like it was from the 1990s even the prototype facebook glasses we've seen look pretty chunky Google Glass, even at nearly a decade old, looks far, far sleeker. And although some people didn't like its design when it came out, I thought it was iconic, eye-catching, and not so obtrusive that it looked like you're wearing an old 1970s Viewmaster on your face like modern AR glasses do. The problem is that all these companies are trying to force this tech into a form factor that we're just used to. Glasses. But that just doesn't work, simply because I think we're a long way off from making AR tech fit into small enough frames that we're used to from regular glasses. Glass doesn't pander to that norm. It goes out of the way to establish a new form factor and one that isn't hindered by the status quo, and I can get behind that 100%. Despite it being a piece of tech from 2014, this thing still utterly blows my mind. This simply does not feel like a decade-old piece of tech. And if it was released today, even in its current form, I'd still be clapping and dancing wildly like a child in a sweet shop. And that just shows how forward-thinking this thing was. I think there's a very simple reason why it didn't work. Firstly, it was massively hindered by its price. Back when it came out, it was priced upwards of £1,000. That was a lot for something that was considered a peripheral, and significantly more than any other wearable available as well. I mean, Google did always promote these as beta units, sort of a prosumer release, similar to how Samsung pushes its original Fold devices, more of a product concept than an actual general release. So if Google had decided to push these to the general public, then perhaps we would have seen a significant price drop. But the second and main reason that I think it didn't work was that we just weren't ready for it. It was met with controversy and confusion and hysteria from people who didn't understand it. There were concerns about having a camera on it and a concern of invasion of privacy. And I remember several news articles at the time saying that it was banned in various places, like bars, for example. It was understandable. It had no form of indicator to show that you were taking a video or photo, something that companies like Snapchat rectified by adding very obvious LEDs to the front of the frame to signify that you were actually recording. Nearly a decade on now, and are people ready for it? That's the question. And I certainly think that we're in a far better place with our mindset about wearable technology, but it's hard to truly say. People are certainly more willing to part with their privacy these days with Echo devices every room and enough forms of tracking on people's phones that it makes denying the existence of the Illuminati New World Order questionable. I myself want glass so badly to come back into mainstream use. AR really is the future. And glass, I believe, is the perfect vessel to make my AR dreams come true. I just can't believe that this is coming up to a decade old. Look at any other tech from the same time period and the vast majority looks old and outdated. And glass is such a stark contrast to this. It's like someone has just torn a portal into the future, reached through it, grabbed the nearest thing and this is what's come back through. I'm glad I've made this episode because it's given me a reason to revisit it, to pick it up, to use it. But it's also made me a little sad because it's reminded me of what could have been. We had the future in our hands, and for whatever reason, we let it go. What do you think of Google Glass? Do you think it's still futuristic? Do you like the way it looks? Would you use it personally if they brought it out now? Let me know in the comments below, because I am genuinely interested in finding out what you guys think of it. And all I can say is that if you have the spare money knocking around, go onto eBay right now and get one. Of course, at your own risk of the lack of functionality. But if you can get it working, this thing will still blow your mind. Even after the crippling software updates and lack of support from Google. And if anything, it will serve as an iconic tech relic in your house of the past and what it could have been nearly a decade ago. 
But that concludes today's episode. Like I said, a bit of a different one because this is a technology that I'm passionate about. I want to share my thoughts and views on the subject. And if you enjoyed this format, let me know in the comments. And if you're new and enjoyed today's episode, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe and notification bell for more episodes of Stu's Reviews. And I'll see you back in another soon. It's so cool.